you heard earlier about the Outcomes Initiative, of which outreach is a key component. And Joanna and I are here to give you some more detailed information about outcome to the outreach outcome, and some ideas and examples for reaching out to your communities. So, as you saw earlier, um, Outcome 2 is a desired number of an underserved target group participate in the summer reading program. This outcome is phrased as an output, but it also indicates a change in behavior among the target group. So essentially, um, Outcome 2 is a tool developed by CLA to help you reach the groups that you've always wanted to bring into your library. Another reason to take part in the statewide evaluation initiative. So Outcome 2 was developed in light of the results of our Outcomes pilot project and research by Dominican University that shows that the uh, summer reading participants are mostly active and engaged um, readers who already use the library. So we all know from anecdotal evidence and from the research that there are many, many children, teens and adults who aren't taking part in the summer reading program. And we knew it was vitally important to respond to that finding with the evaluation initiative. So I am really pleased to be able to tell you that already well over 2,000 previously underserved community members have been introduced to summer reading programs as part of the initiative. We know that everyone will have different groups that they want to reach out to with their summer reading program and um, the initiative gives you the tools to use to reach out to the groups that you want to reach out to that are underserved in your communities. And the slide shows just a few of the groups of people who have been reached out to in the last two years. We're already seeing that the outreach can have um, ongoing impact in the library. Uh, this year a librarian from the Los Angeles Public Library told us that the success to me was seeing so many new faces in the library. I continue to see some of them even after the close of the program, saying hello and of course checking out books. And again, as you saw earlier, the initiative provides you with the prepackaged resources to take part and that applies equally to outcome number two. So we have information on how to reach out effectively with your summer reading program, tips on developing relationships with underserved communities and we have programming suggestions. And we also have a set of resources that are tailored specifically to libraries that might want to partner with community-based summer enrichment programs. In 2011, 438 children and teens took part in summer reading as a result of partnerships between community-based summer programs and these public libraries. And many more students visited the library, received library cards, and took part in library programs and events. And these partnerships are all part of a statewide initiative titled Summer Matters, a new vision for summer learning in California, which is spearheaded by the organization Partnership for Children and Youth. CLA is a partner to this initiative, and thanks to funding that we've received from the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, we've been able to develop an online partnership resource that's available for all libraries to use. And that includes information on preparing to partner, communicating effectively, setting and meeting expectations, and follow-up. We have developed core principles and activities that we found to be at the heart of the most successful partnerships. And we have suggestions for programs and activities. And because the support that CLA is providing for summer reading outreach is a part of the outcomes initiative, the surveys and focus groups are at the heart of the resources that we provide. So they will enable you to evaluate the results of the outreach that you're doing, and they'll tell you how well your outreach is doing and what things you might need to change, and then also will help you promote the results of your outreach. So again, this is a very, very brief overview to highlight the emphasis that we are placing on outreach with the Summer Reading Program and tell you about some of our resources and our results. I'll be talking in more detail about Summer Reading Outreach with Virginia Walter and Eva Mitnick on um, Sunday afternoon at 3.45 for those of you who are staying for the weekend. And we will discuss needs assessments, how to create community partnerships, issuing surveys, and how to convene and conduct great focus groups. And all of this will be illustrated with examples from Eva's experience of conducting outreach-based summer reading at the Los Angeles Public Library. And the three of us will be the presenters on the summer reading webinar in January. Now I'm going to hand over to Joanna, who's here with some fabulous ideas for reaching out to your communities. Thank you. Well, now that Natalie has thoroughly convinced you of the necessity of doing outreach, I'm going to give you guys some specific examples of effective outreach strategies. 
Hopefully this first slide is very common sense to most of you, but I can't reiterate enough how important it is to go out and form partnerships within your community. Uh, a personal connection can really open doors that have either been closed because of long-standing issues with staff or maybe those doors were never open before and now you can take that opportunity to open them by going out and forming a relationship with someone either in your schools or within the community organizations that you want to target. School media specialists can be a great place to start because you already have that common denominator of libraries and wanting to get kids and teens to read. The library tech from one of our Escondido high schools started volunteering at my library a few years ago because she wanted to get experience in a different type of library. And we became great friends as well as colleagues and I can't tell you how many introductions she's made for me with other high school media techs and how many meetings she's gotten me on the agenda of. And she's also been absolutely instrumental in expediting the process of getting approval for my flyers to go up in the school libraries. Having that personal connection can be invaluable. Outside the schools, you really need to determine who your target population is going to be. And from there, figure out who their important, trusted contacts are within their sphere and ally yourselves with them. These are some examples. So if you wanted to work, for example, with teen parents, find out who their counselors are, who they work with, and who they trust. And if you can form a partnership with them, you'll have a better end to work with those, those teens. As Natalie pointed out and has been demonstrated in countless research studies, one of the greatest challenges that we face as librarians is going out and targeting those kids and teens that don't already come into the library, specifically as public librarians because we don't have a built-in set of patrons that are a sort of our captive audience. So we really need to think outside the box and think outside the confines of our library to reach out to those patrons who may not even know we exist, much less all of the free services that we have to offer them. These are some examples of areas and organizations, places that librarians have looked to build a new platform of patrons. The Sacramento Food Bank offers a summer program for kids ages two through 12. The Food Bank did all of the work helping this, the kids navigate through their reading bingo cards, which Lori pointed out to you before. And all the library staff had to do was prepare the materials and go to the food bank three times throughout the summer to do summer reading programs, story times for the little kids, and then other programs for the older kids. At the end, the kids were given books, and this, this idea came from a staff member whose friend was volunteering at the food bank and said, hey, they have this program, why don't you guys do a partnership with them? So be open to inspiration in any form. The Sacramento Library staff also used a slightly adapted version of that bingo card for their juvenile hall participants. Now, the library staff wasn't physically able to go into the juvenile hall to conduct the programs, but that meant even less work for the library staff. They had passed everything on to the juvenile hall staff, but they were still able to get books into the hands of those juvenile offenders, which is the most important thing. And at the end of the summer, the ward that had the highest number of finishers was given a party. So they left with a great positive association with reading and with the library and hopefully once they you know, move on from that time in their lives they'll remember that experience and it will be a positive one. In Escondido I partnered with San Pasqual Academy which is a residential educational facility for foster teens. Having worked in foster care before I became a librarian it was very important to me to target that group. So I called their school librarian and I said how can I help you? And we formed a friendship and I started out just donating books to her and then I was able to actually come on site and meet the teens, which there's a lot of security issues with that, but because she knew me, we were able to develop that friendship and that trust and I was eventually able to sign those teens up as an off-site summer reading group and I continue to participate with them every year. Although these all started out as summer programs, they have the potential to grow into year-round partnerships and programming opportunities, and most importantly, they have provided a channel for these libraries to get in and serve those underserved populations that you might not otherwise get into contact with. When you're reaching out to your community groups, it's really important that you arm yourself with research about the value of libraries and the breadth of resources that we provide for free. I know this comes to a shock to you and to me, but there are people out there who don't see the value in libraries that we do. So CLA can absolutely help you with this, and there is a URL in the speaker's notes that you guys can um, go to for more information on, on making that elevator speech about why they should spend their time working with you. You also want to sell your services in such a way that demonstrates that partnering with you is no additional work to your partner organization. And actually, it can take something off of their very full plate because you're just encouraging their kids and teens to participate in a program that you already run. 
Make it easy for your partner organization by creating ready-made group kits. This can be one of your greatest selling points because you already have everything planned out and all your partner organization has to do is easily incorporate that into their established agenda. The Escondido Public Library, Los Angeles Public Library, San Diego County, a lot of libraries provide these ready-made group leader kits that include instructions, reading trackers, incentives, stickers, bookmarks, book lists, whatever you want to include in it to make their job easy. And it really encourages these organizations to want to participate with you because they have very little work to do themselves. Uh, as Natalie mentioned, there's going to be more information on this on Sunday at the Reaching Out With Your Summer Reading Program session at 345, so definitely put that on your calendar. Finally, be persistent. Lori also emphasized this about how following up is not nagging. And I know that it bothers me when I send things out and I get no response that they've even received it, or worse yet, they say no to my brilliant idea. But being persistent absolutely pays off. And the best example I have of that is the YMCA in Escondido. I sent them the promotional DVDs that I make every year for two years in a row and never even got acknowledgement that she received it. I was about to kick her to the curb and lo and behold, this past summer, she emailed me and said that she needed my help setting up a book club with her teen program and that she wanted to, to participate in the summer reading program as well. So it was an absolutely win-win situation. She's back on my good list. I was able to sign her kids up for the summer reading program and I was able to help her start a book club that's an ongoing thing at the YMCA. So I was thinking about that old Kevin Costner movie, Field of Dreams, and the whole if you build it, they will come thing. You know, librarians are great at building wonderful collections, creating fun, exciting programs, and building these inviting spaces for kids and teens to come, but they still don't come. So my advice to you is, if you go there, they will come. Go to where your target population is. And this summer, I am targeting the Escondido Skate Park, because I see those kids at that skate park, and I don't see them in my library, and I want to know why. So I get the e-newsletter from our rec, our rec department, and it tells you about all of their monthly movie programs and skate park events that are going on. And I try to make it to as many of those as I can, armed with my flyers and posters. And I ask them to post the flyers. I ask them to make announcements about my programs before their events begin. And I'm hoping that this will start to pan out for me. I also think it's a great idea to put up your flyers at the local grocery store, the taqueria, the mall, if there's a community bulletin board. If you put your information right in front of their faces, then you'll have a much better chance of actually encouraging those people to come into your library. As Penny mentioned, uh, I also pro make promotional DVDs. I work with a group of teens and the videography department of the city every year and we make promotional DVDs. You can YouTube Escondido Public Library and see the different uh, videos that we've made. But now you don't even have to do it yourself. You can use the videos that have been made by CSLP and CLA. They were teen video contests and you can use the winning videos from those to promote your summer reading program as well. You can also put your teens to work by creating a teen outreach team or street crew. If you have reliable, as reliable as teens can be, group of regulars, bring them all together, make them t-shirts, and empower them to get out and get the word out about your programs. And it's a great way to get rid of some of your old summer reading prizes or some arcs that you have and incentivize their success. Finally, this is, on my, this is my number one to do item on my agenda when I get home. If you're really ambitious, create a summer reading flash mob. I think we all know what flash mobs are. And there is a huge fountain outside of City Hall where the teens congregate on Friday nights. And I thought it would be such a cool idea to get colleagues and teens and friends of mine that want to do this and put on a flash mob. You can get inspiration from the book cart drill teams that have made parody, library parodies of popular songs, or you can look at some of the other public libraries that have attempted this, but really just use any song. It doesn't really matter what you're dancing to. The idea is to tag them with that information and get the word out about the summer reading program and just convey to them that the library is a cool place. I'll be showing you a specific example of a flash mob for the summer reading program later in my teen programming section. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm also on Twitter at Texting Librarian. Okay, thank you. <laughs>